So the next item is array formulas. So array formulas is, is a special type of a formula that can perform multiple calculations on one or more items in an array. So that's from Wikipedia, but it had a very, uh, the most simplest explanation of what array formula is. Previously, when we were using formulas, it was calculating um, a value that gets put into a cell. But what array formula does is it put, it uses the same calculations over uh, arrays, so like a selection uh, of uh, cells, and apply the same uh, as well. So this can be quite handy in many places. So we're going to have a look at examples uh, now. So let's, uh, let's assume that we're given two columns of numbers, uh, A and B. And once we have those, uh, before we could have done uh, A1 times B1 and then um, calculate uh, the remaining rows by dragging the formula down. So this is possible, um, but another way of doing this is using the array formula. So what we do is select the range where the results should go. Okay, so we're going to have uh, select the whole range first. So let's have a look. Uh, so let's just use um, these guys for now. I'll zoom in a little bit more. Okay. Um, so let's say this is my one column. I want this is the other column. I want to multiply it together. Okay. So what we know so far is I can do this multiply by this and then drag it down. Okay. Oops. So drag it down. That works. But alternatively, what we can do is select the whole range and then type in. Um, enter the array formula a1 uh, to a7 multiply by b1 oh in this case it's not a1 a13 to a33 times b13 to b33 and once we do this we don't just press the enter you need to press um, control shift enter control shift enter uh, I forgot my equal sign, so that's the problem. Uh, let's try that again. Equals that. Okay, and there we go. So again, we get the uh, values. So let's just quickly check whether they are the same as what we expect them to. This equals that. And drag this down. So we can quickly check that the values are the same. Right? So why would we want to use array formula instead of just normal formula? Well, we'll cover that very shortly. Okay. So I've just shown you an example using some numbers. So how is an array formula better than the first method? What do you think? You can pause the video here and think about it and resume uh, once you thought about a couple of reasons. So first one, it ensures that all cells in the result range are using the same calculation. Okay. So if you quickly look at the uh, formulas, it's not referring to uh, individual cells, but rather it's referring to the whole ranges of the cell. Okay. So whichever you click, uh, it's referring back uh, to the whole ranges of the uh, sources. Secondly, a single cell in multi-cell array formula cannot be changed, which prevents a cell from being changed accidentally. So that means in normal formulas, uh, sometimes you make a mistake. So instead of B21, maybe B22 was inputted. And as a result, it's going to calculate some numbers. But later, if I change the weight value, it may update, right? But in array formulas, I cannot do that. It gives me an error saying that you can't change part of an array. Okay, so I'm stuck with it. So once you set the formula, you cannot accidentally change the value inside an array uh, formulas. OK, 
Okay. And lastly, it allows us to express calculations which would have to be done in several stages otherwise. So we used a simple multiplication example, but um, when the formulas get a little bit more complex, which requires the use of the arrays, um, then using the array formula is more simple uh, and more intuitive. Uh, using the array formula in that case is much better way as the solution is more intuitive and straightforward. Okay. So what is happening when you type in an array formula? Well, basically Excel, for this particular example that we have here, Excel is taking seven uh, element array, A1 to A7, and multiplying it by another seven element array, B1 to B7, uh, resulting in another seven element array which is placed in as many cells as needed. Okay. Um, essentially what that means is I'm taking the whole lot of a column or with the rows also works. And then I'm going to take another set of array and chuck it into the calculation that's going to be conducted on those uh, arrays onto a new uh, array. And this works very nicely when you have named cells. So if you are unsure about naming cells or uh, ranges, uh, please have a look at um, the previous uh, video. So if array formulas are combined with named ranges, uh, formulas can be made even more concise and easy to understand. For example, an array formula saying score multiplied by weight. So let's have a look at that. So here currently we have cells, but now let's name them. This one is going to be score. And this one is going to be weight. So here now I can just type by selecting the whole range here uh, equals um, score times weight, control shift, enter. So I don't have to give the ranges anymore. I just have to give the name of the range. And now it seems uh, more intuitive. And again, I cannot change the content uh, of individual cells. If I want to change uh, one thing in the array, I just have to remove the whole array formula and start again. Okay. So when working with arrays, uh, you don't need to use Control Shift Enter everywhere. Um, it is only when the formula requires uh, element by element operation. That means this element is getting multiplied by this one here, these two for here and so forth. That's an element by element operation. So if no such um, operation is needed, you don't necessarily have to do that. There are many functions uh, that expect an array in its argument. For instance, the sum or the average uh, the min or max, uh, so forth. Um, hence, the formula average score needs only enter, right? Because it's calculating by taking the whole uh, uh, entries in the array as an input. However, um, if we do average score times weight, then this needs a control shift enter because we need to calculate the score times weight of individual cells first. And then using the final uh, value uh, to calculate the average. And I have been covering that slide with the Excel sheet, but I'm sure you'll be watching it uh, with the uh, PDF open next to you, right? Okay, so let's have a look. Equals average. Uh, score times weight, close the bracket, enter is only going to give me 22.8, but we know that average of um, the weight times score should have been 19.9, right? So if you only press the enter for the average, it's not going to give me uh, the, the actual value that I'm looking for, but rather it only calculated that particular cell. 
Okay, instead, if I do control shift enter, so now you can see here up here in the formula bar that now the curly brackets has been added. So if I do control Z, uh, you see that no curly brackets, now curly brackets. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, so by making it as an array formula, it calculates the average correctly um, uh, where I expect it to. This means if I'm passing in a bunch of numbers into a function uh, as an array, then I can apply array formula where some of those uh, arrays require uh, element by element operations before being processed by the function. Okay. So let's have a look at some more examples. If we have a score range and a weight range, we can easily calculate uh, the average uh, of score times weight using the example that we just saw before. Um, suppose we want to calculate the average, but this time we have some conditions. For instance, uh, the score has to be 4 or higher. So this means uh, we can refine our uh, formula a little bit. Uh, without array formulas, we probably want to um, calculate and then do some if conditions and then again combine uh, those together. But with array formula, we can combine those formulas uh, straight away. So uh, let's get rid of those. So here we have equals average. And what we want to do is if a score is greater than or equal to 4, then score times weight. Otherwise, an empty string, close the if, close the average, and control shift, enter. Okay. So this case, I did get exactly the same answer because as you can see in the score column, uh, none of them is actually as smaller than four. Um, so let's quickly add in some variations. So in this case, I'm going to make this one, two, three, four, five. So you can see that by including um, score values, three of them, the average is actually 13.88. Um, but by excluding uh, these three rows, uh, the average becomes 16.08. Okay. So using the array formula, you can combine um, the if conditions and do the element by element operations. Okay. So this is much more readable and concise uh, and doesn't require intermediate columns. So if we were to use, uh, to calculate this um, using an element by element operations, we probably have to calculate uh, whether these are true or false. And after that, uh, we need to calculate only the ones that return to true and so forth. So it could get quite messy. Um, whereas using the array formula, it's quite simple to do so. Okay. Um, but uh, something to note here is that uh, when the if condition fails, uh, instead of zero, we set the result as an empty string. Why? Well, why don't you try by replacing the empty string to zero and see what happens? Okay. So instead of an empty string, we'll put it to zero and do control shift enter. And then now you can see the result actually changed even lower than the actual average. So this means if we set the result to zero, uh, this is going to alter the average that we want to calculate. Why? Because instead of leaving it out as a blank, we are uh, inserting the value zero. So when the average gets calculated, zero gets taken in as part of the input, whereas a blank which is an equivalent to an empty string, will not be counted at all. Okay? So hence, this will give us a false result. So do ensure that when you write these up, uh, double check your solution is correct. Okay? So let's have a look at another example. Uh, this is a vector uh, a of n. Um, to normalize this, uh, we can divide it by the elements 
uh, of the vector by the magnitude of the vector. Uh, and the magnitude can be calculated as the square root of uh, all the elements added together uh, after being squared, right? So how can we calculate this using array formula? Vectors. Well, this can be calculated by just putting in the actual equation as we saw into an array formula and because we have list of items, they become uh, the array. So for this example, we're going to use a named range called vec um, for the elements of our vector. And then the formula becomes uh, vec divided by the square root of the sum of vector squares. Okay, so firstly, we have some numbers. I'm just going to use three numbers. We're going to call it vec. And we want to calculate um, the array formula for this. And what we need to do is equals vector divided by square root, where we're going to do a sum of vector squared. Okay. And then we need to do control shift enter. Okay. So for this example, we got 0 0.26, but Actually, the normalization happens for all the items, right? So instead of this, I should have selected this three elements and press shift enter. So now I get the normalized value for each um, vector item, which is 0 0.26, 0 0.53 and 0 0.80. Okay, so let's have a look at the process that happens when we are using the array formula. Okay, so let vect uh, be a1 to a3, which we just saw, then what's going to happen is that firstly, the foremost inside the bracket gets uh, calculated first, so that's uh, the vector squared. So 1, 2, 3 becomes 1, 4, 9. And then uh, you get the sum of this, okay, and then uh, that's 14, then you get the square root uh, of 14, which is getting used. Uh, as a division uh, denominator, right? So 14 is the denominator for this vec, but vec contains three different values, one, two, and three. So one, two, and three individually gets divided by 14 um, as a result, uh, sorry, square root of 14. So as a result, you get uh, these numbers. Okay. So we can calculate total length of text in a number of cells using an array formula as well. So let's use the named range words for the cells containing text. Uh, then formula becomes sum of the length of the words. Very straightforward, right? So the words, we have some uh, different values of uh, different types. And basically what we have here is equals sum. Oh, the end result is a single value. So we don't need multiple um, uh, row, rows equals sum of length of words. Oh, I haven't defined the name. Words, here we go, equals, try again, sum of length of words, control shift, enter. 13. So what does that mean? Well, let's have a look at um, its uh, process. So we can calculate the total length of the text in a number of cells, right? Firstly, uh, we get the rows, each containing those values. We get the length of each one. So it becomes five, three, five. Hello is five. 2.3 is three letters and false is also five letters, okay? And then once we unpack the lens, then we're going to do the sum. And then the sum uh, of 535 becomes, oh, my slide is missing numbers. Anyway, the answer becomes 13 just by adding up 5, 3, and 5.